Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. Hopefully you've already seen us going through this the hard way using a lot of calculus, um, but I want to go ahead and make a video showing the easy way as well. So our problem, if you remember, was some wall that was holding back water. And in that wall, we had a gate that was held by a pin. We said that the distance here was h, and the length of the pin was 3 halves h, and then the distance of our wall was w. We needed to do three things. First, we needed to sketch the pressure. Second, we needed to calculate our force. And finally, we need to calculate our moments. The pressure sketching doesn't change. We have some pressure that's equal to rho g y, where y is defined downward from the surface of the water. We care specifically about the portion of the water that's pressing against our gate. Now the easy way to do this is to split this into two separate pieces. So we have a rectangular distributed load and a triangular distributed load. The easiest way to think about pressures is as a distributed load against some surface. So our rectangular load we can write as a force on the midpoint. So this is our location of F1. And the value of the force is equal to our pressure multiplied by our area. That's all we need to do. But what pressure are we using? We're using this pressure right here. So this value is our pressure. And to be specific, that value is rho gh. Our area, of course, is 3 halves h multiplied by w, just the rectangular surface that this thing is pushing against. I'm calling this F1. This other force is triangular. It acts one third of the way up. So we have some F2 that's acting at h down. To find the force of a triangular distributed load, we just take the average of these two pressures and we multiply that by our area. So our second force is equal to the average pressure multiplied by our area. This is going to be rho g times 3 halves h divided by 2. This area doesn't change. 3 halves h times w. So our force is simply F1 plus F2. So let's calculate all this out. And we'll use the same constants as before. We plug this into the calculator and we end up with 1,470,000 newtons. Remembering, of course, that a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. These three meters cancel out with these three meters. Our second force, writing this out again. And again, we plug this into a calculator. And this time we end up with 1,102,500 newtons. So our force is just the addition of those two. And we end up with 2,500,000. 72,500, which is exactly what we got the hard way. Now, the way we get our moment, again, is by calculating the moment from these two forces. Another way of saying that is that this is R1 times F1 plus R2 times F2. So, since we know exactly how far away these forces are being applied, we can calculate the moments that they impart on our pin. So, R1 the distance to F1 is going to be 3 quarters h. The equivalent load is exactly in the center of the panel. R2 occurs 2 thirds of the way down, and so we just write this as h. So our m is equal to 3 quarters h times F1 plus h times F2. Writing it out, and then finally plugging all this into a calculator we end up with 22,050,000 newton meters, just as before. Now, the difficult part of this is that the method only works when we can decompose our force 
into nice rectangles and triangles. If we have anything more complicated, then we have to go back to our calculus and do this the hard way. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.